Hey, uh, hey buddy, before this video starts, you, uh, you want to buy a collectible figurine? It's called a U2s. This one's of Luke the Notable. Very rare. Pretty soon you won't be able to get them anymore. It's also, like, real heavy. Like, I can feel it. I can, I can hit someone with this thing. It's a weapon. Check the link in the description or go to U2s.com if you know what's good for you. Get you one of these before they go away. I gotta get out of here. In this video, I, Luke the Notable, will show you how to make a sextuple beacon array in Minecraft and basically become unkillable. Before I recorded this video, I did a poll on my different social medias and about 80% of people polled said they never built a single sextuple beacon. Honestly, it's kind of embarrassing. You're gonna just live your life like that? That's almost as embarrassing as a grown man talking to a camera while wearing a green suit about a block game. You know, I used to be a Halo creator. Life was simpler back then. I didn't have green ski masks. Since I've shown off my emerald compound with my sextuple beacon array and my original hardcore Minecraft world, everyone wants to know how I did it. To me, it's simple. There's no need for a tutorial. You just be the greatest. But I know that's quite hard, so I'm gonna do a little tutorial. You might be sitting there at home thinking to yourself, Mr. Notable, why do I need all of this? It's so frivolous. It's not. Aiden. Most people, they build a beacon, a single one, and stop. And I weep for them, for they've never felt the power of a true sextuple beacon. So if you really want to see what I mean by all this, go watch my video, How Strong is Luke the Notable? In that video, using my sextuple beacon array, I took out literally thousands of monsters. Never once did I come close to dying. My game was lagging so hard, there were so many creatures on my camp. But thanks to my sextuple beacons, I was untouched. Now before I really get started with this tutorial, I've got to talk about setup. These these beacons are incredibly powerful, so they are definitely hard to get. However, every block in a beacon can be farmed safely and automatically. If you're going to do this, you definitely, definitely, DEFINITELY need an iron farm. Each sextuple beacon requires 8,784 pieces of iron. You could use diamonds or netherite, but that would be absolutely insane. You would probably spend hundreds of days just mining for a single beacon, let alone a sextuple beacon. So, building an iron farm is necessary. You also definitely want to consider building a wither skeleton farm. These farms are traditionally very hard to build. It took me over 100 Minecraft days to build mine in my main hardcore world. However, once they are built, you can farm wither skeleton skulls, a main ingredient in beacons, automatically. So if you really want to fill your world with beacons, you'll need both of those farms. Otherwise, it'll be much more grindy. So now it's time to actually show you how to build this beacon array. Here, I'm in my actual, real, hardcore world. This is not a backup, so this is current. I do stream this world on Fridays, I just want to plug that. If you haven't seen them, you can always go check the videos on demand. I'm in this world because I want to say something that I've kept secret for a very long time. These beacons are not perfect. They're close! Don't get me wrong, they're very close but they, they're not perfect. The reason they're imperfect is mine are centered on a single block. And I'll show you in a second, that's not how you want to do it, if you can help it. Now, when I originally did my beacons, I only had four, one in each corner. I did not think I would add another 12 on the outside. And unfortunately for me, the whole system will have to be nearly perfect, probably from here on out. I just really don't think I want to take the time to slightly adjust 16 sextuple beacons just for a block or two more coverage. What should we call this world? How about, uh, buy my U2s or else? That's good. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna do this in a super flat world. It's just gonna be easier for everyone. First things first, let's build a house. Yeah, we'll put a door here and some more oak. Oh, it's looking good. All right, so now you've got your house and this is a home that you've spent many, many hours and days, maybe even years constructing, and you want to protect it. One of the best ways is with a sextuple beacon array. And what you need to know, the most important thing about building this is make sure you measure properly. If you don't measure properly, I guarantee you will end up like me and have 16 sextuple beacons that are off by like two blocks. I centered my beacon array on a single point. If you can help it, try to center your beacon array on a square like this. What you see on screen right now is a 100 by 100 block square that I've done in red. This represents the coverage of a single maxed out beacon. I know we're doing a sextuple array, but you gotta start with your first one. Once you get this first one done and perfect, the rest will be so much easier. To find the perfect location for your first beacon, get the center point of your house. Here I've got a four quadrant center point marked with red, blue, yellow, and purple. 
we're gonna start with the red, but it doesn't really matter what side you start with. Just start with one corner. From the center, go in either direction. Here, I'm just gonna go, I, I think this is north, 50 blocks. And then once you've found the center, 50 blocks, go 50 blocks into the corner and mark that spot. This beacon marks the exact center of where it should go. But you always want to test. You always want to test. So we're going to test right now. Best way to build a beacon, in my opinion, wherever you're going to build it, first start with a four block pillar because that's as tall as the beacon is going to be. Put your beacon on top. From there, just go around and build a pyramid. That's all you've got to do. I just find starting with those first floor blocks in the middle just makes the whole beacon making process so much easier. You also definitely want to put the whole beacon in because it won't work unless it's a maxed out beacon. So you need four layers in the pyramid. I know it's a bit annoying, but like I said, the most important aspect of this whole build is measuring and you've got to get it right with this first one. If you're a true perfectionist, I kind of do recommend recommend on your first beacon anyway, maybe making a perimeter like this. You don't have to use red concrete because that's kind of annoying to get. You can always use something like stone or deep slate. It just helps to have lines. To make sure your beacon is perfect, you want your beacon to match up with the lines that you've drawn. And again, I recommend doing this. Charge your beacon with something like strength two. That's what I just did. Then go to your line. How you're going to check to make sure your beacon is perfect is make sure you go into your inventory and look and see that strength two is resetting. It should get down to 13, but then go right up to 16. That means you have beacon coverage. You'll wanna do this on all of your lines to make sure that you're lined up properly. So over here, it looks like on the top end, I'm good. And on the bottom, it looks like I am not good. So I have to do a little bit of adjusting here. I put my beacon too far west. By how many blocks, I'm gonna check. So in theory, if I'm standing on this red line, I want my beacon to give me strength. So all I'm going to do is move one block at a time until my beacon gives me strength. Let's see, one block, and there it is. So we're just one block off. So I'm just gonna throw a temporary block on here until I check every corner to know that it needs to be one more block east. If I move this whole beacon one block this way, it'll be lined up. So it looks like this block here, this line I should say, is off as well. So. I do have strength here. You can see that it's resetting at 13. But in theory, when I go to this grass to the right, you should see it re It should not be resetting, but it is. And this is why measuring is important. Even though I've done this before, another line of mine is off. This is my north side. And on this line, I should have beacon powers. And I do. You can see that I reset at 13. That's perfect. However, I should also lose my beacon powers when I go into this grass one block over but you can see it's still resetting at 13. I actually have to go two blocks over before it stops resetting. So this side is off as well. So that means my beacon actually has to go one block south as well. So I'm gonna adjust that here. And this is now the new beacon placement. That's where it needs to go. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make this new beacon and test it again. All right, so new beacon placement. Again, what we're looking for is we want, oops, we want to have strength on this red line. And as you can see, I'm standing on the red line and my strength is resetting at 13 seconds. But if I go one block over outside of this red box, it should not reset anymore and we're perfect. I'm gonna check it on the other line as well. We should have strength on this red line and it resets at 13, perfect. But you go one block over and it no longer resets. Perfect, so now this beacon is absolutely perfect. That's right where it wants to be. What I recommend doing immediately after you figure out the perfect beacon spot, go to that beacon, go on top of it, and write down its coordinates. Keep that safe because you wanna know where this beacon is. The whole concept behind a beacon array is once this red beacon stops working, I'll make a blue beacon over here that will pick up the coverage. So here, my strength is covered by the red beacon, and over here, it's covered by the blue beacon. There is no block that doesn't have beacon coverage. That's what makes this perfect, and that's why measuring is just so important. Though once you got the first one, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go to the coordinates, and I'm gonna be putting the blue beacon in that direction, so I wanna just go 100 blocks away. I'm at 48 which means I should have to go to negative 52, I think. But that's why you test. Okay, so let's remember how this should work. Now we've got a red beacon and a blue beacon. 
The red beacon should give me power here. And then as soon as I cross over into blue territory, I should also get power from the blue beacon. So now these two beacons are perfectly aligned. Now all we've got to do is do the rest. So here I am simply a hundred blocks away from the blue beacon. I kind of used that to measure. I'm putting in the purple beacon, which will again give me more coverage of strength too. All right. So just to give you a little reference, I have been recording this video, this section of it, for almost an hour now in creative and just got these beacons fully set up. That is how long it can take sometimes, but you have to be meticulous. Measuring is the most important part. I now have four beacons aligned absolutely perfectly with strength two. When you step into yellow and step into purple, strength two is carried from each side and they're aligned absolutely perfectly. So now I know you're all asking the question, uh, you haven't done a max beacon setup. You've simply got strength two set up perfectly. What do we do next? Well, what you do next is we go to a corner. Here, I'm going to start at the red beacon because it's the one I built first. And then you set up this beacon to be a sextuple beacon. To do that, you simply add a, uh, a platform on top where you can put six more beacons. It's pretty easy to convert a maxed out beacon to a sextuple beacon. You, of course, uh, just need more iron. So now, as you can see, all six beacons are on and we've got a sextuple beacon now all we have to do is line this up with the rest of them and I'll show you how you do that probably where you also want to write things down because this has to be the same for all of your other beacons and it's very important that you do this if you don't trust yourself you could also use a sign that this is my strength beacon on the corner so I'll just put strength. So we're going to go directly left of strength, though I really should use the uh, directionals. We're going to go directly south of strength. And on this one, uh, let's just say we put jump boost. It doesn't really matter what power you choose. It just has to be the same for every beacon. Now, these red lines won't matter because remember, the red, blue, yellow, purple lines are set up for strength. So even though I'm standing in this red line, I am not going to be getting jump boost because, again, it's one block south, the jump boost beacon. But this is why measuring is super important. The smart ones out there, and I know there's some of you out there, will know exactly what I'm about to do and will see why I said that you need to measure correctly. If we go to our blue beacon, which is right next door, and one block south of the strength beacon, we put jump boost, guess what? It is going to line up absolutely perfectly. It won't line up with the lines that you've drawn, but you'll see as soon as I remember, uh, I did not get jump boost from the red beacon on this red line, but because the blue beacon's jump boost is one block over, the blue beacon is picking me up. And that's essentially all you have to do. Once you've set up the first beacon power strength, you just have to make sure the rest of your beacons follow the same pattern. So I'll do strength, jump boost, haste on this first row. And then in the back, I'll do something like, let's say, uh, it's not called uh, mining. I, haste is mining. Ah. On this one, I'll do resistance and then I'll do speed and then I'll do regen. So all I have to do to make sure my beacons line up correctly is that every single one of my beacons that I lined up with strength follows this, this exact same pattern. It doesn't matter what the pattern is that you choose. It just has to be the exact same on every single beacon. Now I've got red and blue set up. Now we're on yellow. Same thing. Doesn't matter what the order is when you first set them up but you do have to make sure that the order is exactly the same on all of your beacons. And again, purple, exact same pattern. We've got strength, then we go south, we've got jump boost, and haste, boom. Then you come around to the back side. You've got resistance, speed, regeneration. And there you have it, four sextuple beacons, all lined up absolutely perfectly. Let's go test. You always wanna test on the seams. That's where you're gonna get your biggest problem. So we should have all of the beacon powers right on this yellow seam, and you'll see that they'll all reset at 16. And now you've got a 200 by 200 square of absolutely perfect beacon coverage. Congratulations. All right, now let's say you wanna make it bigger. Now I'm not gonna do the whole thing, because it's gonna take a long time. <laughs> but I'll show you. I'm gonna go over to the blue beacon because it's labeled. You wanna start from beacons you've already tested and know are good. I'm gonna stand on top of my strength beacon because that's the first one I set up. And I'm going to go 100 blocks 
in this direction. So from negative 46, I need to go to negative 146 in the coordinates. So once you've got this beacon built, you guessed it, you just set up the beacons in the exact same way you did before. And this is gonna sound just so annoying. Strength, jump boost, haste, come over here. And then we put on, uh, what was it, resistance? Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Am I forgetting? So now, essentially, you've created a new seam. We can call this the pink beacon. Uh, as I'm standing on the pink beacon, you'll see all of my powers reset to 16. And as uh, I go to the blue beacons area, they will all reset to 16 as well. So you're just picking up that coverage. You'll then have to build beacons like this all the way around to get better coverage, but it is worth it as you get a huge area by the end. You're just going to keep repeating these beacons infinitely, if you want, to get as much beacon coverage as your little heart can take. I'll say it again, if there's anything you take away when you're doing this video, it's that measuring is the most important step. If you don't get this initial array perfect, it's gonna mess up everything. Also, I didn't mention until now, but you'll also wanna bury your beacons down at bedrock. This is definitely the way to go. When I initially set up my array, I didn't do this, and it was a pain having to do it later. That will give you beacon powers from all the way at bedrock to the sky, so it just increases your overall area. I would very much recommend getting the initial measurements on this square first before then going and burying your beacons. Again, measuring is very important, but once you have those measurements and the coordinates, expanding the beacon array is not that hard. You just really want to take some time to get everything perfect when you start out because it's very, very hard to do later. Thank you all for watching. If you've got any questions, this is a tutorial. Let me know in the comments section down below. I'd be happy to answer any to help you get your own beacon array. Big shout out to my notable members on screen. All of these people are absolutely notable. Uh, they're always out in the streams, which I do every Friday. Uh, if you want to get your name in the video like this, in the end screen scroll, all you have to do is hit that join button and become a notable member. Thank you all. You're awesome. Get the U2s. There's a link in the description. It's absolutely awesome. I really don't want you to miss out on this. They won't be here forever, so get them while you can. Stay notable, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.